From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Charlie Burton, Mr. Dollar. Oh, yes. Was hoping you'd come out of seclusion. Seclusion? I arrived in Ensenada at 4 o'clock this afternoon. It's now 10 p.m., and I still haven't been able to see the man I'm supposed to protect. I did not invite you here, Mr. Dollar. I do not need any protection. Well, my insurance company doesn't agree with you, and they've got a half million dollars riding on your life. Look, my life has not been threatened. That note was a mere bit of buffoonery perpetrated by one of those nearest and dearest to me. One of those to whom I have unstintingly devoted my entire... Oh, knock it off, Burton. I know the good old lovable Charlie legend, and I've seen your TV show. Well, naturally. Look, are you going to talk to me, or do I wire my company to cancel your policy and notify your sponsor that you've refused to cooperate with us? Mr. Dollar, you may come down to my room in ten minutes. I'll be there in an hour, Burton. You wait on me for a change. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location in Sonata, Mexico. To the Home Office, Union States Casualty Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the laughing matter. Expense account continued. Item five, a dollar and 40 cents. Taxi from the hotel in the village to the Comandancia Police on Frente Avenue. I wanted a rundown of one of the maids at the hotel, a girl named Valena Morales. I'd seen her on the hotel terrace shortly after dark near Charlie Burton's room. Seen her arguing with some man who'd managed to slip away from me in the darkness. Captain Peral said he'd check with me later and politely avoided asking what it was all about. If he had, I couldn't have told him. The Charlie Burton comedy show was on location at Ensenada, Mexico, and Frank Maltz, the producer, had frantically phoned Hartford and claimed Burton's life had been threatened. Burton thought it was a practical joke. Maltz didn't know. Neither did I. But I was there to find out. Hiya. You are Mr. John Dollar, I assume. You couldn't assume any corrector. Mind if I come in? By all means, do. Thanks. I am Charles Burton, Mr. Dollar. Yeah, I know. I've seen your face in a number of saloons. I beg your pardon? Oh, on their television sets. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. Well, sit down, Mr. Dollar. I just did. Yes, yeah, so I noticed. And I don't imagine you'll be here long enough for me to have something sent up from there. Oh, I'm sure I will. I'll have scotch on the rocks. Double. I see. Room service, please. This is Mr. Burton in Suite D. Please send up one scotch on the rocks. Double. Uh, make it double. Oh, uh, just a moment, please. By the way, Mr. Dollar, what is your room number? I can't seem to remember it at the moment. Why don't you just charge it to yours and then bill me for it later? If you think your room service, cancel that order. Yes, I said cancel it. I will not tolerate this high-handed attitude from a hireling, sir. But not your hireling, Burton. Now, let's get a few things straight right now. From what I've heard about you up to now, I don't like you. And when I get to know you better, I do you like it or not. And I certainly do not. And there's nothing you can do about it. Oh. Try throwing your weight around with the insurance company and they'll cancel your policy. And if that happens, you'll have sponsor trouble right up to your neck. If you think you can... I think you're not going to let it happen, Burton. You can't afford to. So cut out the kidding and let's get on with it. You know, I... I like you, Dollar. <laughs> you're so uninhibited. I'm going to buy you that... Nope. Sorry. Why not? I didn't want it in the first place. It was only a way to get your goat break down that phony guard. But uh, have one yourself, though. Now, drinking is not one of my vices. Oh, so that explains it. Explains what? It wasn't one of Hitler's vices, either. <laughs> You're so delightfully insulting, you know. One can hardly take offense. Too bad. I'd hope for better results. Would you mind telling me just who exactly is responsible for this prejudiced opinion you have of me? Well, as I remember, it was fairly unanimous. As I know, you talked to Frank Maltz. Maltz, of course, is bitter because he hasn't been given complete control of my show. Or any control, the way I hear it. As long as it's the Charlie Burton show, Mr. Dollar, Charlie Burton intends to run it. Only the gods are immortal. Isn't that what the murder threat said? I'll get to that. Then there's Gloria Dale, my leading lady, dear Gloria... I suppose she told you I've treated her very badly. Practically forced her to sign a contract that pays her several thousand dollars a week 
A hideous fate, actually. It could be. And Al Schreiber? Did he mention the fact that I took him out of a a 40-a-week burlesque house and taught him the subtleties of high-class, big-time comedy? Things that I... I had spent a lifetime perfecting. Look, Burton, if you're trying to convince me of your fine, sterling character, forget it. It's irrelevant. I'm here because You're of... here because of that note, and that's exactly what I'm getting at. You think it was written by one of those three people, don't you? Right. Well, I agree with you. But you also take the threat seriously. I don't. Why not? Because not one of them has any reason to kill me. Yes, I know how they talk. They're underpaid, overworked. The boss is a tyrant. They hate him, the same old patter... And that kind of talk never leads to murder, Mr. Dollar. Yeah, you've got a point there, I guess. That note was pushed under my door yesterday as a crude attempt at a joke. Nothing else. Then Maltz lost his head and had you sent down here from Hartford. And the whole thing has become ridiculous. You may be right. Well, you sure you won't have that drink? No, no thanks. Oh, by the way, there's a maid at the hotel here. I believe she works all the rooms along the terrace here. A small girl, very pretty, with her short, curly hair. Oh, uh, yes, 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 Valina. Well, you've noticed her, then? Oh, quite. I find her utterly charming. Would you happen to know whether she's married? I really didn't bother to ask. Does it matter? Not to me, but it might to her husband. <clears throat> you are determined, aren't you? There must be some reason why you're so scared. Scared? You do have a preposterous imagination. Good night, Mr. Dollar. It wasn't my imagination. Burton was scared, or worried, or upset. At any rate, something was bothering him. But at the moment, he was covering up for some reason, and there was nothing more I could do to push him. So I gave up for the time being and went back to my room. But I wasn't ready for sleep, and the terrace outside my windows lying empty in the moonlight seemed inviting. And even more so, the sound of breakers a hundred yards beyond. I followed a winding path through the hotel gardens and came out of the sandy cove. And there I found her. Gloria Dale, sitting on the sea-worn rocks by the water's edge, with a bottle beside her, getting quietly drunk. You've discovered my guilty secret, Mr. Dollar, and I've only got one glass. It's that or the bottle. I'll share the glass with you, if it's all right. Sure. There you are. Thanks. Here's to the moon, people. They seem real close tonight, don't they? Yeah, they'll be dancing out there on the water by midnight. <laughs> I think you're as crazy as I am. <laughs> Crazier. You're not even in the same league. I'm glad you came. I go sort of nuts on moonlit nights by myself. Hey, what happened to Al? Weren't you two together? I sent him off to bed. He gets a little wearing sometimes. He's real gone on you, isn't he? I guess so. And you? He's a good guy. I like him a lot. He's fine, but... But no click, huh? No click. Here's to better, better clicks. Hey, easy, kid. You're drinking it straight, you know. Help yourself. What are you trying to do to yourself, Gloria? Learn to forget. Forget the emptiness, the hollowness. There's nothing in me anymore, except the hate, of course. There's plenty of hate. For Charlie Burton? But Charlie Burton. Do you hate him enough to kill him? You've always got your eye on the ball, haven't you, Mr. Dollar? More or less. Would you like to tell me about this emptiness? No, I don't think so. All right. Why not, though? It's the edge of the land and the edge of the sea. And you're from the moon and you go back there at dawn. So why not? Here's to the moon. It makes people crazy. Hey, save half of that one for me. Oh, sure. Here you are. Yeah, just leave it there. So? Well, a year ago, my contract was up. And I was leaving the show. And I was about to be married. Jerry, his name was. And he's the only man I ever really loved. Uh Uh-huh. Burton was furious. Said I was letting him down. I was ungrateful. But he couldn't stop me because my contract was up. And one morning, I got a note from Jerry... Special delivery. We were through, it said. Why? No explanation. Just a cold, vicious note. That same morning, Jerry left town with a friend. Chartered a plane and went to Canada on a hunting trip. And you didn't find out the reason for it? Later, yes. At the time, I was hurt. 
I was terribly hurt. I signed a new contract and went on working. And months later, I got the story around about... What was it? A private detective, one of the crooked ones. Had gone to Jerry with a complete report about me, supposedly. My private life, field reports, affidavits, statements, even photographs. A fake, the whole thing. But it convinced Jerry. You know who was behind it? I can guess. Sure. Good old, lovable Charlie Burton. He wanted to make sure I'd sign that contract. But when you did find out, why didn't you go to I Jerry? I wish and... I could have. That hunting trip, the plane, it crashed. Jerry never came back. He was killed. <laughs> That's crazy, huh? No, oh, easy, sweet. Do I hate Charlie Burton enough to kill him? That's what you asked me, wasn't it? Sure, I hate him enough. A thousand times enough. Only I haven't got the nerve. So what do I do? I drink. Gloria. Hotel. Help me get back there. Please, Johnny. Will you take me home? <laughs> Love and hate, and the black sea rocks, and a lunatic's moon at midnight. And no help on this earth for a wounded heart but time itself. A tide was rising now and rising fast. And hidden by the darkness, a wave curled and broke. And time ran out. I lunged out of bed and fumbled in the blackness for my robe and slippers and gun. Yeah, who is it? Charlie Burton. Open up, hurry. Dollar, you've got to protect me. Somebody took a shot at me through my window from the terrace. Oh, it was probably just a crude, practical joke. Joke? Joke? This is no laughing matter. Don't you understand, Dollar? Somebody's out to kill me. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, a thickening web, clinging and sticky. But one of the flies pulls free by using a gun. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>